Hello and welcome to episode two of The Dirty Corner. In this video, I'm going to discuss something which happened in university and um, try to explore some of the reasons why I think it's important. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, this podcast is based on my experiences at university. I went to art school. I graduated just under two years ago and there are reasons behind why it was only... uh, that long ago. (laughs) I don't know how much to say. Okay. Anyway, this podcast is going to be talking about some of the things that happened at university as I experienced it and trying to make it informative for you in case you are considering going to art school or if you're just uh, looking to hear someone's experiences being explained honestly and... uh, I'm going to try to talk about all of these subjects as well as possible without disclosing too much information so as to give away any details about people or places. So without further ado, let's get into this episode. Is it okay to kill people? Think about that question for a moment and how you would answer it. And I will start by saying that this came up, in fact, it was more specifically, is it okay to kill people to make art? So think about that question. Is that something you'd go, hmm, maybe. To me, <laughs> it's not that hard to answer, but um, but let's get into it. This came up because uh, during this time um, when I was at uni, it was uh, steeped in the pandemic time, so we were kind of students working from home. So there'd be a lot of Zoom meet. In fact, it wouldn't be Zoom. It'd be um, Teams was the platform we'd have meetings on, which I have problems with the Teams platform. From my experience at uni, it wasn't the most stable platform to use for videos, images and messages. It was just a bit strange, but... Uh, I've got recordings of a lot of the things that happened in uni because it was over video during this time. And the tutors would be having sessions with us. I think they call them workshops. But when you hear the word workshop, you imagine you're going to attend a meeting and there will be a subject and you will learn and then you'll start to make art and they'll guide you in some way or in inject some inspiration or some motivation into the practice and that wouldn't happen that wouldn't be the case and instead what we'd have is a powerpoint presentation quite often by one tutor and she was the wife of the dean of the school which i think is a problem because it's nepotistic in its kind of relationship she presented herself with a different surname than he has to try and distance herself, even though if you Google her, she has the same surname as her husband. So um, it appeared to be um, something she would do to present herself as someone not related to the Dean. Anyway, the point being is that she was the main tutor we had for a lot of the sessions, and it was really mind-numbingly slow and boring we wouldn't have much art you know uh, introduced into the time until about it wouldn't be halfway through maybe a third of the way through the meeting and um, otherwise it was just chit chat and it was really slow and it was kind of if there was any going around the students to ask them questions the feedback from the student would be so so flat that you'd think the tutor would say, okay, and then try to stimulate some kind of thoughts or creativity in the student without putting too much pressure on them by maybe giving them an example of what they could do and how they could think about things. Again, this just wasn't the case. It was a PowerPoint presentation and there would be, say, two artists in the PowerPoint presentation that they would be showing us. And so she'd show us this artist and she wouldn't talk about them saying no I really like this artist because 
so-and-so saying their name was influenced by this and that led to their practice being this way. And the reason why I like their practice is that to me, it makes me think of this and, and it has these kinds of themes through it. And this is how I would teach. This is how I'd like to learn is by hearing why the person likes them, who they're influenced by, what it means to them and what you can find in their work. Instead, they would show it and say, OK, this is the this is the, what we're going to be working on. So, yeah, you can read that. Yeah. And if you've got anyone who you like, yeah, um, you can do the same. And it's kind of, you know, as if we've had some kind of brain trauma is the way we'd be spoken to. And I don't like that. I find it very patronising. And um, that was the kind of tone and tempo that they'd speak. And I hated it. I've really found it hard to concentrate because it was speaking to you as if you were a playgroup or something, you know. And um, it was really annoying. But during the time that there wasn't this PowerPoint presentation, the tutors would go between certain students, their favourites, and they'd kind of ask them things. And because um, I think this began when we were actually physically in the studio before the pandemic. And this tutor went around saying, who's your favourite serial killer? And when it came to me, I just thought, what do you mean? What do you mean? Favourite serial killer. That's like having a favourite. And I said something else that's a crime. And I won't say what that is because I don't think that YouTube wants that word out there. But um, people use the expression PDF file uh, because, you know, the PDF uh, formats for images, they use that as a, a way of using this term. So I said, you know, that would be like having a favourite one of those. And one student said, I have one of those, a favourite PDF file. And it was so absurd. I just thought it was such a, a kind of gap between what I wanted from university and what we were having that I just found it bizarre and a bit concerning that we weren't going to end up having any quality put into our education or our degree because of how weird it was. So anyway, this that was what it was like. That was physically in the studio. Whereas on Zoom, this same student who said that they did have a favourite PDF, um, they asked the tutor, is it okay to kill people to make art? Now there were four tutors we'd have. We'd have the Dean's wife, a guy who I considered to be incredibly pompous, a painting tutor, and a kind of, a replacement for a, sculpting, uh, a sculptor who we had as a tutor who taught us drawing. And he was also introduced as a sculptor as well and I suppose he does make sculptures, but I had a lot less um, quality uh, feedback from him personally and experience of him to the other students. So this, this fourth tutor who I'm talking about was basically a friend of the pompous tutor and the dean's wife. Um, so that's why he had the job. So I think it was very nepotistic, the... Uh, hiring practice of this school. Anyway, so out of those four tutors who were all asked this question because we would have them on rotation certain days and on this day we had each of the tutors, only one of them said, well, the answer's no, but here's why we can maybe discuss it. And that was the painting tutor who seemed to have enough quality education and personal ethics and morals to actually say the answer would be no it's not okay to kill people to make art but here's why we can discuss it as a concept which is how you should deal with it the other three just said and they, they all said the same thing yeah that's interesting isn't it that's it there was no 
reason why it's interesting. There was just, yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? And then that student who asked the question was rewarded with that kind of validation from the tutors of good question, good question. Is it okay to kill people to make art? I think that's really weird. Now, obviously this episode now isn't about specific bullying or harassment or vandalism or physical or sexual assault or theft or any of the stuff that I'm going to get into with this podcast. But it is about the tone of the education we received. And is it okay to kill people to make art or just full stop is, well, question mark, not full stop, is a question which if you're going to, if you're going to try to intellectualize this subject, then you've got a job to do. And if not, then you should just rule it out and say no. Because any of this middle ground stuff that we experienced is quite dangerous. And I'll get into why I think it's dangerous. But first of all, I want to talk about the fact that this student was consistently um, trying to push boundaries. And they were a mature student. And at this point, they were the reason why a student had already left. It may be more than one. I'm not sure. Uh, But I am sure that one of the students from our studio had left because of him. And it affects everyone in the studio when someone behaves this way and nothing's done about it. So when they're able to kind of voice this type of absurd question and only have one tutor say, no, it's not okay to kill people to make art. But here's the idea. Um, Then it's a problem. Anyway, I've said that already, it is a problem. Let me talk about why it could possibly be a valid thing to discuss. So the answer is no, it's not okay to kill people to make art because art is not um, a practice which should be... um, which should be fed by anything which harms others. And there are several art practices that I think are unethical and should be pointed out and penalised for being uh, immoral and unjust and unkind to certain subjects. I don't think that should be included in fine art because I think it's really harmful to allow that type of corruption into the practice of fine art or into that discipline. Um, So murder or killing in any way is completely out of bounds of what should be permissible. The reason why the painting tutor said it can be discussed, and I don't know whether he went into as much detail as I'm going to now, but is because they always like to ask the question of, what is and is not fine art? Well, they didn't really ask that question, but they tried to present things to us which would be challenging to accept as fine art, considering a lot of us started loving the more romantic history of painting and drawing and sculpture to see how bizarre some of the more contemporary practices are. And you know, modern art and postmodern art practices are. So the idea that um, you would say someone being killed is not art or is not fine art isn't as cut and dry as it may appear to be. And I would love to be able to just rule it out and say, no, it's not art. I can understand that if you say that, then that's a line you've drawn saying killing people is not art. Um, In no way can it be art. But what if it's kind of presented as art and therefore is almost like outsider art or something like that? And outsider art is, um, say, the art which uh, prisoners will make or, you know, people of complete obscurity will make for a specific reason or, you know, people from an insane asylum or 
you know, outsider art is kind of something which is um, completely on the fringes of art making and murder as much as it's completely absurd to me as a concept I wouldn't put it past certain academics to suggest that that could be a, a type of art, fine art, to be viewed and considered. As far as I'm aware it never has been but this was something which could be discussed for some reason. Um, now this student had this idea as kind of a conspiracy theory about a murder being committed by famous artists. I didn't find it interesting and it obviously didn't have enough legs for them to follow through with their degree because they didn't do their degree on that. And it was a lot of, you know, murder related and um, kind of uh, objectification of women kind of themed topics and subjects he would bring up, which was consistent with his treatment of women on the course. Um, there were several instances where it would be um, grounds for either being disciplined or having an informal warning about certain behaviour. But that never happened and it should have done because of the way he was given favourable treatment. So anyway, the idea that murder could be considered art is, I know it seems insane as a premise, but I think the idea is just that, let's say someone did murder people and then the presentation of that dead body was artistic in some way, had some kind of aesthetic quality because art has a spectrum of presentation. It's not all beauty. It can be you know, disgusting, but compositionally sound or, you know, interesting in some way. So if those principles were used in such a um, reprehensible practice as murder, would it be art? That could have been a subject we could discuss. Um, the discussion never happened. As far as I'm aware, the painting tutor basically said, the answer is no, but we I can see why you'd want to discuss that because there is um, a blurry line with um, this is not even beyond paraphrasing because I don't know whether he said any of this, but I know that he said something vague. So I'm coming up with something vague as an example. He said something like, you know, there's a blurry line with what we do and do not accept as art practices. Um, which as much as I really appreciated him having any pushback at all, I wish there would have been a further um, investment in contextualising that type of question. And I'll go into why now, because this is why I keep saying, saying these types of things is a problem. Because it wouldn't be in university, you should be able to say all types of stupid things like this, because that's where you put out ideas that are weird and sometimes a bit silly you kind of bat around ideas because that's where you come up with creativity. Um, but the problem was, this is a mature student who had been very domineering and aggressive against others and now had a buddy in the studio who was the same type of energy. So there was two blokes who were overpowering other people in the studio, mostly young women in the studio and um, then when he brings up this, is it okay to kill people to make art? What most of these people in the studio, being young women of say 18, 19, 20 year old, would be hearing from most tutors is, oh, that's interesting, isn't it? And then from one tutor, well, the answer is no, but I see why you could maybe raise that as a question because there's possibly a blurred line for what we discuss and create for art. What is their perception? What's their takeaway from this being raised in the, in the context of a, of a session at university, of a fine art course? How are they processing this information without any conversation or discussion occurring? It's really stunted, it's, it's a bizarre, 
kind of cul-de-sac which has happened. A question has been asked, it's been validated by the majority of tutors. Good question. Interesting. And yet no follow-up. So again, this person has been rewarded to the extent of asking this stupid question and not being challenged as why would it be? None of them said, why do you think, what do you think about it and why do you think it might be uh, okay to kill someone to make art and have a conversation? It just didn't happen. So these young people now have this weird moral flexibility, not certainly, but possibly as a reflection of how fine art is considered. It's kind of pseudo-philosophical nonsense. None of them are philosophers, none of them understand how philosophy works or any history behind it, but they kind of play with these ideas to try to create this pretentious air of academia. And it isn't, it really isn't. There's nothing academic about what was happening in that session. What was happening was a bully was shooting his mouth off. The tutors didn't have enough about them to shut it down. And the studio suffered as a result. Because that's now another territory which has been broached by someone who is already introducing quite dark themes in unnecessary ways into a studio that should be free to explore creativity however it wants and instead he's kind of oppressing that environment with his preferences and I don't know if it's conveyed in how I'm describing it but the difference it makes to the creative environment for students is that at one point everyone's in there enjoying it discussing things and quite open and at another point they realize if they say something too loud and he hears it he will come over and challenge you. And not in a kind of, we're going to have fun way, but in a way of, I think this, I reckon that. And these women will just be sat there thinking, okay, okay, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to have an argument because he's loud and he's aggressive and he can be fun and friendly, but that's what they're like. That's how bullying happens. I've seen it in a couple of different workplaces where people who can be a problem can also seem like the fun person in the room who can carry the energy in a good way. That doesn't redeem them. It's not something where it's like, well, it can be all right as well. So it kind of balances itself out. It doesn't. It was a net negative for everyone who was there as a result of no checks and balances on these types of conversations. This should have been handled better. I've started teaching. If someone raised that, I think that would warrant a, a conversation so that everyone understood what we're talking about, why we're talking about it, and how far we can get with the conversation. But instead, I don't think it lasted five minutes with any tutor. I think he challenged them they either said, that's an interesting question, and that was it. Or, like I said, what the painted tutor said. Which was, you know, a relief for me. Um, now, a, you know, a lot of the students just kind of kept their head down. But I think that's a result of an oppressive environment. Keeping your head down is not something which happy, healthy, free, creative people do. They stick their head up, they want to express themselves, and they kind of play. People who keep their head down do it because it's not a safe environment, because it's not okay to have an ex you know, a freedom of expression. It's all kind of, um, I don't know, it's reflected by the most intimidating person in the room. And that's not necessarily by size or by appearance. That's by presentation. That's by the energy they bring into the room. Um, so the idea of is it okay to kill people being a subject at all, I think is 
an embarrassment for the school. I found it terrible that they didn't do better with that concept. And I can only hope that after what ended up happening, thanks to me and some other students who banded together, hopefully some checks and balances will start being put in place, some protections for students so that this can't continue in the future. Although I don't know that's the case and I'm not necessarily hopeful that it's uh, happened yet. But the more people speak up and try to change things, the more pressure will be put on these institutions to improve the conditions that students are facing. And I went with the best of intentions to get a decent education and come out as a better artist as a result. Whereas what happened was quite the opposite. And this is just one of the stories that try to paint the environment as far as absurd things that get said. A tutor saying, who's your favourite serial killer to all of the students? And a lot of the students saying, I don't know. And the bully loving it. And me saying, that is an absurd question. Having a favourite serial killer seems like an absurd thing to do. I don't think that's something people should have. And, you know, it just didn't go like the way I wanted it to as a course. You know, it didn't, it didn't kind of turn out as a decent education. Um, but the point is, all of these stories will hopefully paint a picture for you of how an education can be crumbled. And some of them will be really severe, like I mentioned earlier, the, the different categories that I'm going to go through. I will be discussing those and I'll probably be giving a warning at the start of the episode when it does become a very serious episode. But all of the stories lead to the Dirty Corner and why this podcast is called that. I hope you enjoyed the episode. There'll be another one. Next week, every Thursday, I'll be making an episode to discuss different things that have happened from my vantage point, and I will start to introduce new characters and new stories uh, and hopefully show better evidence for some of the stories to back up my, uh, you know, my narrative that I'm painting for you. The first episode that I posted last week, I did show some drawings that I was discussing and it didn't quite show the um, disregard that they were treated with. Um, so I will make sure that in the future, if I do have things that relate directly to the story, that it's shown and it's clear for you. But all right, thanks for watching. See you next week.